<laughs> so welcome everybody who's watching the recording and welcome everybody here. We just did a short introduction of everybody. Um, yeah, and the last one um, we didn't, uh, or who did not introduce himself is Kai himself. Um, so um, before I welcome you to Kula Brajana, maybe uh, Kai can just start to say a few words about himself, just like we did everybody now. So this is probably a good way to start the whole thing. <laughs> Kai. Sure. Yeah, I'm Kai. Super happy to be here with you. Super honored also. And um, so I'm a certified advanced teacher trainer, or we call it like an extended, the certified Anuzara teacher, something like that. And uh, able to host 200 and 300 hours trainings, which I really like to do. And my background is also spiral dynamics. It's a Swiss system. And I worked also in a sequencing teacher training with Jason Crandall. So I have different things. I'm teaching since 15 years now and uh, doing teacher training since, let me think about it, yeah, many, many years. And super happy to serve the Kula and also Bjorn has been in my trainings and it's always better they talk about it. So uh, instead of me and I'm super happy to introduce a bit about sequencing what I have in mind and figured out in my system I created for my trainings to make that whole topic yeah, transparent and also for you guys workable. Great. This, um, this presentation is part of Kula Brajana, as you know, and uh, since there are some new folks uh, who signed up for, for this um, presentation today, I would like to start with a very, very short presentation about Kula Brajana. I'm going very quickly just so that you know where you landed or what you're watching. Um, well, some people ask, uh, ask it what, what the name actually means and Brajana means two things. Um, on one hand, it's um, that we wanted to, to, to put a spotlight on the cooler to illuminate the cooler. But um, word-wise, it also means that we're allowing each person of the cooler to shine. So it's, it's two ways already. Um, yes, please um, mute your phones when you're not speaking. And um, if you want to ask something, please use the chat. So I'm going to, when um, or during Kai's presentation, I'm going to monitor the chat and then answer stuff there. That, that's easiest. If you have, if Kai wants you to, of course, to answer some questions, <laughs> then you can just talk or raise your hands or anything like this. Um, about our team, we are five country coordinators from Europe. Um, you can see them or yeah, them in the picture. And um, we gained the idea um, from um, from um, Samudra Shakti, um, the same program in the US uh, that was working quite well. And we thought we need something like this uh, with European friendly beginning times in Europe as well. So this was our birth date, so to say. Okay, Kai was so kind to introduce himself, but one thing he didn't say, is that he's also an active member of the board of, of the Anasara School of Hatha Yoga. So um, we have a very official person here as well. This is the next one. Okay, and then one thing I want to say, or I have to say desperately as well, and I'm going to say it at the beginning and at the end again, so in case you're leaving early, um, you heard it. There's going to be a deadline about Samavesha coming up, up this week. Um, the early bird to book tickets will be on the 7th. But there's also one day before that a date where we need to um, know how many people are signing up at least. And we still need a few tickets more in order to make the whole festival happen. So if you're planning to come and you haven't booked your ticket yet, please book it. If I don't know if anything comes up, you can always return it. But if you're planning to come, please book it before the 6th of July. Please, please, please. And tell your friends to do so as well. <laughs> Important. 
very important. Okay, that's it. Stop Freigabe. Okay, I think Kai, if you are ready, oops, then I'm going to take this out. And there you are. Have a fun meeting. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Julia, also for having me. And let's start with a short sand frame. So please take a comfortable seat and close your eyes. Relax your jaw. Bring the attention to the breath, the inside of the body. This prajana inside. Pull your hands in front of the heart. And let's start the session with one night at home. So please take a deep inhale. A long exhale. Inhale. Oh. Bow your head to the heart of the Mashivaya Gurave. Bring your hands to the knees. Open your eyes. Sorry. Vielen Dank, ihr Lieben. Thank you very much. So, short introduction to the topic we have today, which is also one thing I'm working um, for the curriculum committee. We're working on a new 200 hours teacher training manual for the for the Anusara School of Hatha Yoga. And uh, so I'm also doing that part in the new manual coming. I don't know when, but it will be in the future some, somehow. And um, so I was thinking since I did my own training 2012 with Jason Crandall or 2014 with Jason Crandall in, in sequencing, I was realizing that we would in the teacher training manual which John gave to us, there was a part of, I think it's chapter 14 or something in the manual, in the official Anuzara manual. And I would find like two pages or maybe three, you know? So, and uh, so I was like, okay, so how is sequencing working, right? And so, and then I was like, when I did my own trainings, I was bombarded with questions. Yeah, Yakai, we know it's Tantra. It's all very free, creative. We can do whatever we want, but we are completely lost, you know? And uh, that's actually what I also figured after my uh, training. I was a bit like, okay, I learned so many things, right? So many different aspects of yoga and how to do it. And so I didn't really know where to start and where to end. So I thought myself, okay, let's have that freedom, which is super tantric. And also John gave it to us in a very genius idea of also the universal principles of idea, uh, uh, of alignment, I think, which was pretty, pretty is still pretty genius in my eyes. And so also the loops and stuff. So the whole alignment part is really present and working very well. And we have, on the other hand, we have a complete tantric worldview, which he embedded in the first yoga style ever. In, uh, in the last century, let's say. And uh, so he was like, he was like having those both aspects also with the heart theming, heart theming and the uh, universal principle, the alignment part were like pretty well layouted, you know, so. And I thought, so in between that, you know, how can I combine that? How can I make a very clear structured class? And so people would ask me, non-stop and i would say okay guys let's do something like a structure create a structure and i called it i called it segments so 
those are the segments of a class which will I will introduce today to you guys. And then we will work on this special part of sequencing. If you can, uh, as you can imagine, this, yeah, what I will talk about today is the foundation of a 100 hours teacher training part, right? So we have now, let's say, 40 minutes left, so we will, we will touch a bit the stuff, you know, but it's kind of also, I think, an introduction. I can also really recommend and encourage you to go deeper and you can always address me and we can figure out more about it. So let me share my screen to give you an idea how I structure this sequencing part. And um, so I have like, uh, I don't know how many pages, but ah, 132 pages of a uh, work and exercise book for the Anusara teacher training developed in the last eight years, I think. This is a pretty uh, like two years old uh, edition, which is uh, pretty there. And then we go into this part where we, let me just, go through it, where we have like, yeah, I have to go a bit more further and here. Yeah, so, and we will jump right away into the aspects of the peak post preparation. So as you can see here, so I hope you all can see my screen. Is it, is it, Lydia, can you tell me, is it good readable? Yeah, is it good? And um, as you can see, this peak pose is part of the fourth segment in my class structure. So we can have usually like one session to the centering, to the warm up, to the stand, standing positions, and so on and so forth. But uh, we want to have just this cut out of the peak pose prep today. I will, when we finish this session, you can write me your email. So I will send you a link here into the program and then you can sign up for, with your email into my system and then you in that for handout. So we let the copyright, copyrights of this handout also then covered. And I will give you then a cutout of this workbook let's say 10 pages or 15 pages so you can work with and uh, so we we are in that in that segment of a peak post prep and that means we want to prepare a peak pose and usually sequencing is something uh, which i think is is also layouted in the teacher training manual can you follow me so far english wise and also from the whole idea of yeah so can you raise your hand if you're still with me yeah so that's a bit my game yeah so i'm like i'm like katrin du auch yeah is alles für dich soweit noch verständlich yeah good yeah so peak post prep is also something we we see in the teacher training manual also in the german one and um, so we would say that we usually would start a class as you know with the centering then we come with a warm up we come to some standing positions, usually standing poses. It's not a good translation here yet, but yeah, let's see. And then we come into, let's say a peak pose class and we have two kinds of classes. One is this class where you have a peak pose, as you know, in the teacher training manual and one class, which is usually the potpourri class or a mixed class. So that would mean you either do like a mix of poses, which have a yeah no real meaning, or you go into a peak pose class, yeah, which is more like towards the peak, towards a pose which you can really master. And um, so in that, we would then go and prepare this peak pose, and that's something we usually really want to do in the best way ever. So what do you think? Let me know, guys, what, what is your goal if you, if you 
work with poses. So what would you say? Just give me a little feedback on how you work with poses, how you work with peak poses, how you work with sequencing, so that I have an understanding what how you how you work it through usually. Well, I work with um, teaching folks the actions that need to be done in for the pose. So I can then remind them and remember, like we did in this, this and that pose, now do it here as well. Very good. Thank you, Julia. Yeah. So um, let me say, Cassie, what about you? Um, I try to uh, do poses which are similar to the peak pose and which go the way up then. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Cassie. Yeah, so that's a very good that's a very good point Cassie just made. Yeah, we, we have created the peak pose in the class. And if we think about sequencing, then we have to really be aware that it's not about alignment, it's not about the philosophy, it's just about poses we put next to each other to have a sequence or like a, a sequence with, which makes sense and supports the highest pose, the peak pose. And what is a peak pose? So I have a, I, have a, I don't know if I'm, um, I'm a bit uh, unsure if I should start more before or if we already on the on eye level, let's say. Can you can you follow me when I say peak pose, guys? Can you raise your hands? Peak pose is good, yeah. And uh, can can you also follow me if we have that cut out of the sequencing, which is the peak pose prep, the preparation of a peak pose? Yeah. So because the warm up we need, it's also part of the sequencing that we use the Surya Namaskar as an example to do the warm up and we use some standing positions for also in instructions introducing first UPAs and stuff like that. But in the peak post prep, there's the real juice. This is the real, let's say, difference between those classes. When you can have the warm up in a similar way and the standing position also in a similar way like let's say warrior one two and so on the peak post prep would always be completely different depending on the peak pose itself yeah and what is a peak pose a peak pose is the the asana that requires the most physical strength and flexibility mental concentration and body awareness in your class sequence. So, um, Vitor, Vitor, can you can you just read it again, please? That I have a, because it's so good, you know, so this sentence, you know, it's not from me, but it's, it's still good, you know? <laughs> Wait, just a second. Uh, yeah. What is a peak pose? Peak pose is the asana that requires the most phys physical strength and flexibility, mental concentration, and body awareness in your class sequence. Yeah. So if we have that really make make clear for the for the for the sequencing, then we make sure the peak pose cannot be topped. Yeah. There cannot be one pose asking for more physical strength or flexibility. Let's say there is no more complex pose in the sequencing than the peak pose. And you need really a lot of mental focus, focusing to be able to really address that movement and to master that pose, let's say. And that's, I think, is a very important aspect of the peak pose itself and we can also do it with a demo and you can also do it like before those times you see here you know it's just an idea how to do it it's not necessarily that we have to do it like that it can be also different it can also move a bit you know that would be part of a 90 minutes class <clears throat> and we would also 
counter and cooldown poses then we would create some counter poses and that the four the five and the six is now what we're focusing on in this session so when i look at a peak pose let's say we have the bakasana as a peak pose then i would ask my teachers to really think about bakasana and bakasana is a very, very who had who had a bakasana as a peak pose in his class once? Yeah, okay. So who can tell me what is like, uh, what, is, what is something you would really um, go through in the bakasana? What would you really work through then? What would you focus on in a, in a preparation for that pose? What would you need? And uh, core strength, shoulder flexibility a little bit. Can you say the first the first thing again, please? Yeah. Strength in the arm, arms. Arm strength. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So we have like Bjorn said, core and shoulder flexibility. Yeah, and we. And then we have something like as a second part, which would be the hip openers, which is interesting because we need a bit the hip openers to really engage into that pose, which is interesting to do, but it's kind of second aspect. And usually we can ask in those peak poses for, I don't know where it is now, here. Yeah, we can ask in those peak poses for, Either we go with a um, group standing poses or the groups of poses we are in, reverse like or reverse poses, standing poses, sitting, lying, arm balances, that would be an arm balance, right? So we can say, okay, Bakasana is an arm balance, yeah? It's a uh, level one, it's um, so mains, uh, mains also usable, use, usable for, for beginners. It's, we have like twists, we have back bends, we have hip openers, we have, we have forward bends, and we have maybe also core poses. So those are groups of asanas we usually work through. And if we have a, an arm balance, then we usually have the same structure of things we need to prepare. And that's what I call the body aspects, yeah? So that's what we have here. Usually we would work the front thighs or the hamstrings. We would work on the hip openers, which would be also straight or also open to the side. We would could work on, on twists, which would be, mean spine. We could work on side body, which would also mean like spine in a way of extending the spine we would could work in shoulder openers in all directions to open the shoulders and we would work in maybe a bit for the wrists if we do a lot of handstands or ambulances we can also do that right we can prepare those and we can in very rare occasions we can also work a bit on the neck we have like a lot of uh, let's say openers to the back or to the front and stuff like that so this would mean that we usually in peak post preps we would work on deeper opening of the body deeper flexibilities let's say we would work in the in the um, warm-up we would work with poses like high lunge right who has ever done high lunge of you guys has ever done a high lunge yeah so that's not a super big hip openers straight hip opener if we go into hanuman asana let's say yeah the the split then we would need more than the high lunge to prepare so we would do standing split we would do maybe a thigh opener we would do a we would work a lot on the hamstrings so we would work on the legs part to really engage into hamstrings and that would also because of the muscle groups of the hamstrings and the thighs which are big groups of muscles that would also mean that we have here a lot of um, a lot of work and it will also take more time maybe warm up is usually very dynamic 
you know, so to really warm the warm the body. And John always said, move the people, yeah, uh, really make them make them sweat in a way. Yeah, so that's the that's how we how we prepare the muscles to really to really be safe in a way therapeutically that there's no harm, nothing, and we can really work from there. And then we go into the, let's say, front thighs, into the, into the thigh work, into the hamstring work, and the, the muscles are really warm and we can, we can open that. So we are in that part where we have the warm up finished with, with really warming the body up, heating the body. And now we go into different, different aspects. So, shoulder opener and that's what Vakasana is really about right it's shoulder openers and we would do shoulder openers we didn't we didn't prepare in warm-up yet so we would do like the back uh, shoulder work we would do a bit of maybe Garudasana work we would do uh, stuff like uh, opening of the of the shoulders in, a, in, a, in this way and not only this but also uh, yeah, doing doing this like in all kinds of movements, we would go into deeper shoulder openers to really, really also what um, Bjorn just said to really also work on the arms, on the strength, on the addressing of those muscles in the arms. And key for unbalances is always core work, or the work on um, inversions like handstands headstand, um, pincha mayurasana, and all the arm balances like galavasana, ashtavakrasana, bakasana, ikapara bakasana, kuninyasana, ikapara kuninyasana one, ikapara kuninyasana two, all those poses would require core work. So, and now I'm usually asking my, my students if they create a class to really think about what poses they can create to work only very structured on those levels, on those aspects. We could also do slight hip openers, what I already said, and then I would create usually in my class sequence, very structured, I would say, okay, let's do some arms, cross, uh, arms interlaced, hands behind the body, yeah? Let's do some Garudasana arms. Let's do some forearm push-ups or like just moving the, the shoulders and strength. And although this is also a um, core work pose here, this forearm push-up, I just wanna have it extra. Yeah? I wanna have like the push-up or the, uh, the plank pose. And, but something more than I have in the warm up, usually I have many, many planks in the warm up when I do Bakasana, but I also want to have a side plank maybe. Or I want to have this forearm, uh, like the forearm down um, core pose also here. Or I can even do a boat pose in preparation for Bakasana. And even now can, you know, bring the forearms to the front and even bring my, my um, my knees to the elbows and then I'm already in that pose and that's something I would always recommend you to think about this pose in a geometric geometrical way, way and then turning this pose around so lay it down and you know be on the back trying to have the sh same shape the same same geometry also in different angles sitting lay, lying um, standing etc so, and for the hips, I could do just a lizard or just malasana. You know, malasana is also very good because you see it's already the, more or less the geometry of the pose itself. So, and then from here, I can, I think I can then create a peak pose prep to create this bakasana, which would be a um, group of arm balances and level one. So that's how I would say we can create for a peak pose, very structured shoulders, core and hip work. And that's how we start. So any questions until, the, until here?
I have one, <laughs> Julia. Um, when speaking about um, core work, for example, um, arm balances require a strong core. Um, of course, to build strength, you can't, I mean, you can engage or wake up muscles for a pose in this specific class, but you also have to like think, think about the future as well, right? To, um, so if you, if you have a completely weak core, then of course you cannot strengthen it within one class just in preparation for the pose. So do you, do you have any strategies? Do you add core work afterwards, for example, for like the next time or next week or next month or so? Or do you just do core work to, to wake up the muscles so that they really kick in when they need it? So you would mean like um, doing work beyond the peak pose just to to do more for the core or yeah i mean if you are weak of course you cannot just by doing some push-ups yeah. um, before yeah. then there won't be bigger yeah. muscles or so yeah? yeah so of course you have to fit it in at some point for for the future so to say yeah. um and is there is there any strategy or do you tell them that yeah, that this I mean, is for the future or so yeah if it would yeah, if I would need an um, idea about it, so I would send them to my wife, who is not only a gifted Anuzara inspired teacher, but also Pilates teacher. So I think that's really badass, you know, if you ever had a, a Pilates class, at least with her, you know, that, that really works. Um, I would, I think for myself, Julia, it's a very good question, you know, because for myself, which I found very interesting in sequencing with my students was that they would do all kinds of poses into the sequence, you know, which which they like and which usually makes sense. And, and, and I usually encourage and be very restrictive to only prepare the peak pose only. Don't do anything else than that, because everything you do in benefit of the peak pose will make them master the peak pose in ways they never had it before. They never mastered it before like that. And I have many people who come to me and say, hey, Kai, and to other teachers also saying, hey, this, I really did it like I've never done it before because, because I was not doing, I, was, I wasn't doing anything else than that. So in, in your, to, to also to your question, I would say, yeah, prepare them with core, 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 more core. Yeah. So usually core can, can be, exhausted but not that easy you know i think core is a very very strong uh, container which uh, can be work in many many muscle groups from the pelvic floor and so on maybe uh, lydia you can say something about it um anything specific you would like to know the core work that you, how much do you, can you do for core work in a class? Is it, is it at a certain point exhausting or what is core work actually? Yeah, for a lot, for a lot of people, it's very difficult and very energy consuming. So I would just like, especially because if you do a pose like Bakasana, which is already super challenging for a lot of people, you want to make sure you have some energy left for, um, for that pose. So I say just just about enough to get the core activated and working, and that they get connected to it. I would say so to to not spend too much time on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on the other hand, I would also say um, that we usually can use four peak poses to if they if we have beginners like you said, uh, Julia. Also, you know, like people who weak in the core, who are weak in the core then I would definitely recommend a block underneath the feet. You know, I would, I would work just with one, one foot lifted, next foot lifted. So go step by step to bring the knees higher. Some usually the most more challenging part is also to bring the knees at, as high as possible to the, to the shoulders or to the armpits. It's already the first challenge. So I would use a block underneath the feet to really Bring the bring the knees as high as possible with support, and then we can lift one foot or another and another. I know from Lydia from the from the Pilates that there are many many muscles you can engage in a in a in a core work, and I would encourage everybody also to study with the 
the core work from the Pilates to, to get to have an idea from the pelvic floor because it's core is not only the six pack, it's, it's just the whole torso in, engaged into work for the quads. It's really cool. You know, I also once I did a, I know Barbara was also once totally in it. She, then she would lift like one leg just, you know, like for, for one minute, everybody would die because it was like alignment. I remember from Miran, uh, uh, um, from the summer Vesha three years ago, she would lift like one leg, everybody would dive in, in, in one minute. And it was like just the alignment, just to in, align the pelvic floor into that was already hell. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool, you know, to do that with the people. And uh, I'm completely with you, Julia, also to, to go through and to do more than that. Totally. So just to, to mention one thing, if we engage, if we work on shoulders and stuff, so we think the whole sequence through in shoulder poses, and then we do the poses and we add another pose step by step from the easiest and simplest to the most simple to the more complex and more advanced poses before the peak pose happens. Yeah? So you see here, those poses would not usually uh, beat the peak pose. So those are all easier to make than the peak pose itself. So let's, let's take another peak pose. Let's think about uh, let's tell me one peak pose you're thinking about. Which one would you be interested to explore a bit for this exercise? Urdhva Okay, yeah, Urdhva Dhanurasana, yeah, the big wheel or the das große Rad. So if we if we think about what is uh, Urdhva Dhanurasana, what kind of uh, um, group is it? Band. Come again? Back bend. Yeah, it's a back bend, right? So, and that would be a pretty advanced one. So it would be level two, actually. There would be Utvadanurasana, and uh, because level three is just for crazy poses, yeah. And there are also some. But what would you do to to work on a back bend? Usually, how would you prepare the body, except from the standing poses, except from the from the warm up, what do you think? So, Katrin, you can also talk in German if you want, yeah, to to make your point. Um, ich muss immer erst ein bisschen langsamer denken. Also mm -hmm. die Vorbereitung auf die Rückbeuge Bogen jetzt, ne? Ja. Genau. Na, also Schultern. Schultern, super, ja. Yeah? Schultern. Dann, mm -hmm. Dann brauchen wir ein bisschen Rückbeuge in der Vorbereitung, so leichtere Rückbeugen. Ja. Wir brauchen auch Oberschenkelöffnung, Hüften, Oberschenkel, Vorderseite, ja. Oberschenkel, uh, Thigh Stretch, ja, yeah, that's for sure. And ja. usually people would say Hip Openers, ja, yeah, to the side. I, I would not definitely, I would not necessarily do that, but I, I get your point. Yeah. So what else? What do you think? Uh, side body long. Side body long is very good. So you want to really expand your spine. You want to really work your spine. What else could you do to really expand this torso, this uh, rib cage and stuff like that? Shoulder loop. Shoulder loop, like as a loop, is, is super helpful to be in the alignment when you're in the pose. And you can also use it as key actions to, to really work on that shoulder loop ongoing nonstop, you know, to, to make that, yeah, to address that action, let's say. Yeah. For the sequencing, we think in, in more in kinds of like body parts, let's say. Yeah. We would say shoulder openers, and we would have that already covered but uh, by uh, Catherine, as she, as she said. What else? I have like one thing I would like to hear. I can also say it. Yeah, I need also core here. I must also keep the middle a little bit stable in the right way. Yeah, we can do a bit more. Yeah, we can do a bit of core, totally. What I would like to see usually in a back band would be would be four things. So three of them you said already. This would be definitely shoulder. 
this would be definitely side body long for therapeutic reasons and uh, to prevent from harmful action it would be definitely thigh stretch as you said Catherine. yeah uh, that's key so if you don't if a teacher in my classes doesn't do thigh stretches for back bends then 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 you have a problem with kai right so that's not good you know so <laughs> so and the fourth thing is usually twists twists is something interestingly which works into the into the whole spine part of the thoracic the thoracic spine and uh, the in the rib cage so you really work into the rib cage to to make that whole aspect for the back bend really to really open here because usually in the back bend in a let's say in a Utvadana Rasana, what we really want to see is to open the heart, right? So ever heard about it? Open to grace, open the heart, heart openness of Anusara Yoga, yeah? So usually we don't, we cannot, because of the rib cage, we cannot really open the, open the heart space. So this would be always very flat in that area. Where it would work would go down to L5, L6 and other vertebrae down towards the pelvic and then we have here we have a lot of contraction happening so what we want to establish is to have more space in that area here for the for the heart space and in the back to really open here and we don't want to overstretch the neck we just want to have the if i follow now uh, julia's thought also with the with the um skull loop and then we go from there into the shoulder loop and we expand from here then we need a lot of space working in the side body long working already on the on the rib cage and then with the twist we really pull the ribs we pull them out like we pull them out so because the ribs usually have between the ribs there are a lot of muscles i don't know if we have it here no we don't have it so they're like uh, vertical muscles, they are crossed muscles between the ribs and they're really tight. So, and we wanna really work them that they give a bit more space towards the spine. And we can do that best through like really working into that diagonal uh, aspect of twists. So that's what I definitely would recommend. And if you do that, if you really work with people four backbends and those four parts they will all love you you know and they will definitely have the best time ever in their pose and i think that's also something i really want for my students i want to give them the best experience they can have to master a pose and if that is successful and they feel so good in their bodies they will always love you and my experience is the more they hate you during the practice because i torture them with all kinds of preps and do that and do that and do that the more they love you after yeah so don't hesitate to push your people you know to make it really happen that's my that's my uh, recommendation so and if you look into those utbadan rasana and thank you bjorn for uh making that happen yeah that would be um the back bend level two and we really would work on the shoulders i would definitely recommend to work a bit on the wrist because the wrist if you do the arms up and you have this this hand then you would see in the utvadan rasana if you not can create this back bend here in this part of the chest then you would really the arms would maybe not straighten or if you straighten the arm then you would really overstretch your your uh, wrists and I recommend to work it towards the wrist in the in the prep somewhere and I would definitely then if I work on the spine in a back bend I would definitely do twist side body long and I would do definitely thigh stretch the front thighs so and then I would definitely I would uh, also go into those parts of the of the sequence and would say okay what can i do for shoulders and now it looks familiar i do like shoulder openers 
I can even do a handstand as a prep for Utpadanurasana, which is super cool. We are in level two, handstand is level one. You can already start with seated shoulder openers if you want. So just from the beginning, we can, so yeah, it's funny, yeah? handstand, it's easier than ha ha ha. So, <laughs> but yeah, if you have advanced uh, students, they will really be happy to do it like that. Yeah, so, and uh, we can do, um, side body, we can do like a crescent moon, but really not only that you, some people tell me, yeah, I would do, a, let's say, um, Pashva Kon Asana, yeah, or I would just, and I would just go and then I would lift my arm and then I have the side stretch, uh, the side body long stretch. But I think it needs more than that because I can lift my arm. I have a bit of stretch here, but it's not really happening. But if I go, around here like really pulling it like really making this this the side body longer then i have something i can really work through so let's say a crescent moon really working and standing to the sides i could do um twists i could do twisted lunges high lunges low lunges for for the thigh stretch i could do monkey pose i don't know if you see this this is something uh, even like easier thigh stretches already in seating or hero's seat, a uh, hero pose means, um, yeah, uh, virasana, right, it's called. And then also for the wrists, I would definitely do something uh, to the side, the fingers, or to the back, the fingers in all four position. Yeah, I would just work through this, I would do this. So I would just work in all kinds, all directions with the with the wrists. And then I can, from here, I can then prepare the Utvadan Rasanda. That would be a pretty good idea to work through it. And I would recommend you to keep everything out, which is not needed to prep this pose. And so questions to that. Is it a lot, guys, or can you still follow one more thing? Ich habe eine Frage jetzt noch mal zum Verständnis, Kai. Ja. Du hast gesagt, dass wir alles weglassen sollen, was wir nicht unbedingt brauchen. Richtig? Ja. Mm -hmm. Fine, danke. Yeah, we leave everything out we don't need. And the reason for that, Catherine, is, Katrin, ja, der Grund dafür, is that we later can cover all the aspects of the body we haven't covered yet in the counter poses and cool down poses. That's why they call it counter poses. Yeah, it's just gegen posen to, to the poses we did before. So means, yeah, we can then still cover the whole body, but be very strict and stringent in preparing the, the peak pose with only poses we need for that peak pose. Yeah, Julia. Um, I have the almost the same question as Katrin with leaving stuff out. Um, you said at several points that you moved like the shoulders, for example, you moved them in like every direction to, to open the shoulders. Um, so when I, when I look at a pose like Udvardhana Rasana, I'd, I'd look like what the hip is doing. Is it, is it like in flexion, in deep flexion or in deep extension? Um, so I wouldn't prepare the hip, for example, with poses that have the hip in deep flexion. Um, but you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you said that you would like move into every direction, or for like shoulder openers. I know that some directions are beneficial for the opposite direction as well. But um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do like so many, like say rotations or so for for the hip or or something like this. But really stick with hip extension. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. You can if you if you do if you mean with hip extension. Also, we work on the front thigh, right, on the thigh stretch. Yeah, and we would work also. Let's say even if we go into poses like. Um, let's say low lunge, and then we work on the hip opener in that direction, you know, then we can really, we can really benefit from that, definitely. Yeah? I would not necessarily say that we need a side hip opener. Yeah, that would, 
because the hips are closed, yeah, the hips are even in the Udvadhanurasana. Yeah? But definitely everything you can do, Julia, to, to work on the, on the flexion of the hips in a, in a straight way, super good. Yeah? I would definitely recommend it. And also, I totally, I'm totally with you. The shoulders, I mean, they have a, the, the hips and the shoulders are a bit different. So the hips are more, um, they don't have the range as the shoulders and the shoulders have a different anatomy. We cannot go into the details now, but uh, it's good, of course, to, to open this part and to do the side body to really open this. We don't need necessarily the Garudasana because the shoulder blades would pull out of the, they would go more into the front area. It can be beneficial, but it's not necessarily necessary, let's say, yeah, so. Uh, and so you can go even more strict into that. And what I recommend usually my students is to really try also what you really need, you know, to really practice your own sequence once. And that's why also what I learned is also, I don't need a lot of core. I don't need a lot of counter uh, muscle parts. I just need to really work on those parts, which are definitely need a lot of flexibility, let's say a lot of deep um, um, yeah, flexibility or deno, yeah, in Deutsch, yeah, that we really pull like the muscles into that direction because Let's say this part here on the on the hips to the to the thigh stretch. That's something which is really if this is not opening the thigh, then it will it will ultimately go into the lower back because it will then pull from there. Yeah, and uh, that's not a good idea. That's why many many injuries happen because it's not there is no space in the thighs and the thighs are really key in that in that pose. I would say together with the with the whole spine like rib cage area. So um, let me just, because we're running out a bit of time, that we just go into the counter poses and then I will show you how I would do then the counter poses here. And you see on the on this side, this would be Bakasa. It's something I also gonna send you. And there's some text also you can then read, can you see that? Yeah, with the counter and what you do with the sequencing. It's all about sequencing. And here you also see the peak pose and the potpourri class in a way. And then we go into the bakasana. And here on the right side, you see the bakasana uh, in this, can I do it? No, in this small blue um, rectangle here you see the Bakasana peak post prep. So you can also compare. And we are now in the so-called um, segment six, which is here the counter poses, right? The cool down counter poses. So, and if we, if we go there, then we would see the same poses like the Bakasana pose and would think about, okay, what didn't we cover yet from poses and body parts in the Bakasana. And I would say, yeah, let's think about it. We would definitely um, do something like a forward bend because um, that is something we missed yet. We would have a back bend, we would have a thigh stretch. Uh, sorry for the translation, it's not, it's not the last version here. So then we would have a thigh stretch, we would have, we could have an inversion we could have a twist, yeah? So we have the hip openers, the core and the shoulders already worked through. So I would find some poses. And now it's also super important that we think about first the peak pose, which is might, might be a standing pose or a balancing pose or something like that. And the cool down and counter poses, we would just do more towards seating or laying down. So means the whole um, dramaturgy, the whole, um, how do you call it? Like the, when we create a plot of the class, we would come from the seating, from the centering, going more up and up and up into standing poses, peak pose, and then we would cool down again. We would go down to all fours, then seating, laying down, Shavasana. 
So that's what you also have to have in mind. Usually, if you do forward bends, you will find forward bends in every angle of the room, in every angle of the, of the body. We can have forward bends in standing poses, in lying poses, in seating poses, in whatever. Yeah, even in so, and also back bends we can have in standing and so on and so on. So we just go here more to, towards the floor, let's say. And that's what we are gonna do here. And then we can uh, end with Shavasana. And the same is, um, yeah, this is something you can also work through now. That would be kind of an exercise for you to think about, okay, what can we, or we can do it now. What would be needed to really complete the body in, a, in, a, in, a, in an idea of sequencing to to um, practice the whole body when we come from Urdhvadhanurasana. What is what is still needed, let's say? Who can help me here? Maybe Florian, what do you think? Do you have an idea? What could you still need? Um, I would try to lengthen uh, the back again, make yeah. it like even. Yeah. yeah. So lay down on my back and put uh, my hands towards my thighs and press them, push them away first. Yeah. Okay. Make something something soft for the beginning mm -hmm. of the counter poses. Mm -hmm. And what what kind group poses as groups of poses could you still do to counter back bends? Who has an idea? Claudia, maybe, also. Forward folds? Yeah, forward bends, right? Forward folds, that would be counter the back bends, let's say. Or we could do some hip openers here, or we don't, we haven't done like many core work. We could do a bit of core work and we could uh, still do, um, let's say, maybe inversions, but also, this is kind of an inversion, let's say, yeah, it's already uh, head, yeah, uh, uh, pelvis over head, so it's already a bit uh, turned around. But if we go into forward bends and if we go into hip openers, then we have some parts which we haven't addressed yet. And the more we prepare a peak pose with more parts of the body, the less we need to counter them the less we prepare, like Bakasana has not that much preparation, it's just three parts of the body, so we need more counter poses. Yeah? We need also space to create that. And uh, vice versa, Utva Dhanurasana, which is not, it's not Dhanurasana, it's Utva Dhanurasana, yeah? turned around bow. So it's, it's something where we worked a lot in the beginning and then the cool down can pretty, pretty, easy and simple, can be pretty easy and simple. So, yeah, let's say that would be, uh, and then we can always do the super nice segment seven, right? Who likes Shavasana? Yeah, and that's that's how we end then, yeah? So, and uh, so I, I would definitely send you this as a handout, so you can also read it through. There's a lot of text also, you can, you can work through and um, so you have a deeper understanding of what I mean here. And also in an in, in idea of the UPAs and spirals and stuff like that. And then you can also tell me or write to me what you, what you think about it. And you can definitely send me sequences. That would be something I would give you as a homework to create a sequence for a peak pose, yeah? to just do a peak pose prep like we did, like structuring like here, like really working like this is the body part I want to work through, those are the poses, and then create, if you like, create a whole sequence for me, and then I will go through it with you. Yeah, so I will, I'm totally happy to, if you have a sequence, say, hey, Kai, look at the sequence, what do you think about it, then I will definitely call you, we can definitely have a, have a look at it, and then you can also learn from that a bit more. If you want to know, know more, so you just go on Kai Hill 
www.ecoscience.de, which is uh, my website. I will give you also a little link here so you can, for the handout, I need you to just send me, you know, to, to go into the link I sent you now here in the chat. And then it's just for this group that you then that I can or the system can then send you the handout. Yeah, it's a bit more automatized. So uh, I can now go out here like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see if it works here. So it's called Kaihilde A sequencing. I put it into the chat. You can just sign up there. We will send you the handout on Monday. And then you can also address me through that email you see there. Yeah. Okay, guys, any questions? I have many questions, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, uh, well, I'm starting my, hey, my journey, guys. Um, I would definitely contact you, Kai. And I would, I would just like to thank you all for speaking English because I think I'm the only one that doesn't speak German here, right? So I just would like to thank you all for that. I think it was very uh, important for me, this first connection. I can see already, you know, how I feel so beginner and that's so good in a way. <laughs> and I'll be contacting you and I hope to see you in Barcelona in Samavesha. I will be there. Sure. Sunday or no, Saturday... Uh... The fourth at uh, one o'clock, I see you in my class then, Victoria. Yeah? I'm teaching there, and uh, the third will be my birthday. So let's have a birthday bash at Summer Besha, okay? <laughs> We're also going to be there, so I'm so looking forward to it, guys. To, we had such a blast in Meran last time with like 400 people running around doing Anuzara yoga. That was epic. Good. So then, um, Julia, yeah, I hand it over to you if you don't have any more questions. So as I said, it's a 100 hours training part we just made in one hour. We can just, yeah, give a little overview and, and, and go into some details, but it's, it's just, it's just, I did a, only a 200 hours teacher training on only sequencing, uh, which is like, it's like infinite, um, knowledge you can put in here yeah so thank you for listening that was really nice guys thank you thank you thank so, you very much kai <laughs> thank you very much for doing this with us and all the information the link and uh, the homework um i will put in into my email that i'm going to send to everybody who signed up for this class so if you didn't copy it now or if you if you're watching the recording you will you won't be able to see the chat link um, so, so it's going to be in your mailbox. Um, yes. So, um, to end this, um, please save the date. Our next, um, our next presenter will be Soham Johansen, and he'll talk about, um, how to include the poems of really ancient yogis, uh, or ancient poets of India into, into the class. So, um, if you're interested about Rumi and all these, mystic people <laughs> then you shouldn't you shouldn't miss the date next time um, we're also looking for people to present for us you don't have to be certified or an experienced certified teacher um, you can also be very um, well if you if you have some something very special to share or if you're good at something um, that can help everybody please sign up we're helping with everything we're like preparing we're doing all the the background work so um you just need to to show up and and do your stuff and we still need folks from september on <laughs> yeah so samavisha i don't know if you already signed up if not please do it before the 6th of july please 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 yeah thank you so much i hope you enjoyed it oh yeah one thing one more thing uh, for the end nobody gives us feedback like official feedback and we would love to get feedback because we want to get better or want to know how you liked it and and please if if something really annoyed you like i don't know what what 
whatever, please send us your feedback. There is a there is a um, a link to do so from our website from Kula Bratana, um, the Kula Bratana website. You you know already. Please use it. Okay. I think that's it for today. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Kai, again. And I will do my homework now, I think. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, send it in, guys. I'm looking forward to exchange thoughts with you. Thank great. you. Have a great Thank evening. You, yeah? you too, everybody. Sunday. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. See you, Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>